I don't know if it's the internet here or what's going on. Okay, you're on now. But I don't see Ali yet. <coughs> We are waiting on Ali he was and his hat though, man. That was awesome. say that say that oh his hat. You like you you a fan over there? Yeah. Okay, I just invited him. Hang on, guys. We're gonna get Ali on here in just one second, but uh, in the meantime, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go over some. Just some a Q and A with Ali Madawi, who is a pro in his respective trade. Um, Racing and I are in construction. We love construction, and we do some consulting. We do a lot of construction stuff, and so we are going to bring in a guy who is going to talk with you about social media um, marketing and how, basically, how. Maybe there's a right way to do things and a wrong way to do things. Because I know you guys probably see all the time people on there just blast, 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 blast. And and he, he's got some good ideas for you. So this is kind of what he does and, and helps people do this. And so we wanted to bring it not only attention to him, but we wanted to bring um, him. Answer some of your questions and just talk to you about who he is, what he does. There you are. What's up? My internet, I don't know. So anyway, let's get back to it. So tell me who you are and what you do. Just a little clip of, of about you. And, gotcha. And what well, funny you should ask. I've been um, in business for 11 years, but about 11 years ago, um, I married the love of my life, and life was going amazing until I got a job in a restaurant business and realizing that I'm working 90 hours a week. So being a newlywed was not necessarily a happy thing for me, you know, because when you're just married, but you're working 90 hours a week, it just doesn't happen. Um, so I got into network marketing as a concept just to see if there's any way for me to get out. About a year and a half later, made enough money to get out of my job and uh, started into the business journey that, that I'm in right now. But uh, although I grew my business, I was always something would happen a company would sell and i'll build another one or they'll have like issues because they did not do their books right with the irs and then i'll build another one and then the big one of them all hurricane sandy <clears throat> end up happening after uh we launched seven traditional businesses with between myself and the family and uh, you know we thought like the legacy move is happening and uh you know god's got a funny way to re-guide you right on the right path if you will so we didn't we didn't understand it at the time. You know, you look up, you're like, what have I done wrong? Like, I've been doing everything right. I'm tied in. I'm taking care of people. Why would you take it away from me, right? That's that Job feeling that you don't even understand what's happening, but you're being placed on the right path. Um, so, so we lost it all, literally. I mean, we went backwards in our mortgage, uh, lost cars. Like, it just was ridiculous. And to the point where I was like, you know what? All I have is this network marketing thing right now. It's virtual. It's in a computer or my phone. Let me see what happens with it. Well, it went on to really build uh, in 27 states, 15 countries overall, had 50,000 plus people, Salesforce all around the world. And it was the best thing that's ever happened. It's like it was God's way to say, hey, you're killing yourself in your marriage by uh, overstretching it. How about you be home and work from home and spend all the time with your wife? And uh, we've been doing that. And then we decided, why don't we teach everybody else that there is a better way instead of working hard? You can work hard still, but you can work a lot smarter where you still maintain your core values. So I became sure. a strategic partner with right now over 400 people uh, in, in uh, different parts of the world where we're helping them, whether social media, whether business strategy, sales, marketing, you name it. 
we do it all uh, with and for them. Uh, so, so that's in a very fast forward version, how we do it all. That's in a nutshell. I like it. I like it. So how instrumental has God been in your businesses and, and just prayer and, and just reliance on him? What, you know, what does that look yeah. like day to day, Ali? What is, what is well, that? Yeah. For, for those of you who don't know, if you don't humble yourself, God will humble you in his own way. It's like that father-son relationship. Like, all right, like I told you, do not use this, this, you know, this room, right? And then you keep on going and using it again and again and again until that punishment, that timeout happens. And then you realize like, man, oh man, I lost everything that I had as far as privileges. Well, that's what, what it was for me. At first, I did not understand. Um, and then until I, I kind of just surrendered uh, and I said, you know what? All right, I'm going to do it your way. Let's see what happens. And uh, from 2012, my, my brother and I. I'm frozen, racing. Can you hear me? We froze. Is it? I said, are you watching the live? Okay, so we're having a little. Are we back? Not we sure back. what happened. Not not sure it's what happened good. there. Okay, so. <laughs> I yeah, got so your God question. Humbled, God humbled you. God humbled me in a major, major way. But I'll tell you this much: since 2012, since my 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 brother and I made the decision to to surrender and and give our life to God and, and, and just live on the fundamentals that, okay, we're going to follow your guidance. We're going to follow your way of doing things. It's been, it's been hard, but yet the best thing that we've ever done, because I, if you all don't know, I come from a third world country. I come from uh, an Arabic Muslim culture and to, to, to make a shift of life choices and a shift you know, the family around you, the culture that's around you, there are reactions, you know, and then even the way you lived half of your life, now you have to learn a new way of doing it. But it's sure. been the best thing yet. Um, we, um, man, I can go on and on and on, but it's been the, the, the best miracles. Like my wife and I have this, this thing that we say, you know, it's not just me, my wife and our son that live in this house. There's, there's, a, there's another person that lives with us all the time that's just watching over us. And, and yeah. it's felt, you know, like we live on abundance, we live on happiness, we live in joy, and we live on serving others. And that's not me being a great guy. That's just, you know, God's way of doing things. And living in you. Yeah, the Holy Spirit for sure. So, so just tell us what, what would be some, you know, we see all the time. Um, I've got a couple of friends on Facebook right now that are just, you know, I don't know the right or wrong way to really do social media uh, with a, like a network marketing company, but I see people all the time and they just are blast, blast, blast this company, company, company. And I believe that in order to be in a network marketing company, you have to have a good product. I, I think that that's probably the foundation. You have to have a good product. Then it, the product will, you know, people will want to use the product if it's good. Yep. But I think that you can get people, I kind of get turned off by how much they blast you know, and I'm not going to use any names, but just how much they blast that company. I mean, is there a better way to do that? Yes. And, and, and here's why the very first thing for everyone that's watching, why if you are blasting your product, your service, you're like, like a flyer on Facebook, you are absolutely, I can predict that you're not making any money. Like I can guarantee you, you're not making any money. And here's how I know that. Uh, James, you and I, and everybody else, when we get a flyer in the mail, we throw it out. When we see um, an advertiser, when we listen to an advertisement on the radio, we look for the next station. We're paying 7 to $12 a month for DVR so we can fast forward through commercials. When the person knocks on our door trying to sell us something, we do two things. We either say no thank you or we hide in our own <laughs> home. You're laughing hide. because we, but we've done both, right? Like, so, yeah. so, so it's, it's, it's incredible and, and crazy to me. I mean, your email, like even if you just have an idea, this may be a commercial. You just swipe to the left, don't even open it, right? Like, I mean, I can go on. You go to the mall, James, to the mall with money in your pocket. You're saying, I'm going to buy me a hat today. And then that 19-year-old says, how you doing, sir? Is there something you're looking for specifically? You say, no, I'm just looking. You just lied. You went in the store to buy a hat. 
What you mean? I'm just looking, right? So, so the bottom no, I'm line. Good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. The bottom line is, uh, uh, all of us as consumers and human beings, we are we are uh, programmed to say no, thank you, and avoid and eliminate any type of solicitation. Point blank, period. And it's not just from business. I mean, we're talking about it from dating. We're talking about it even from from uh, a spiritual sense. I mean, the church. You know, members would struggle to talk to other people about God and about Bible, right? That's because the brain is designed to say foreign information, protect yourself, protect yourself. I don't understand. Protect yourself. And that's when we shut down on it. So if any of you, ladies and gentlemen, who are watching this right now are blasting your link and your product, and I'm telling you right now, all you're doing is you're telling everybody, look away. Don't talk to me. Don't click on this. Don't engage. And here's how I prove to you that you already know what I'm talking about. You post a picture of you and your kids, 80 likes. You post a flyer or a product picture, two likes, and it happens to be your spouse and your upline. Like, so <laughs> let's keep it real, right? Like you, you have, right. what you have to do is document your, your core values, is document who you are as a human being. That is what I'm 100% passionate about. I don't want to talk to you about my products and services because that's not what you're on Facebook for. Facebook is for us to create a relationship, to create a mission, to, to create a, a movement, if you will, right? Prayer and business is about a movement. It's not about, hey, let's go ahead and, and, and get people to buy a product or a service or, or attend a seminar or a webinar. You're coming here and along with Rayson every single day, giving people valuable information, giving them educational and spiritual advice to get them right back on the right track to start their morning off right. Do that within your business and watch the magic happen. Watch people literally say, hey, I appreciate all the tips that you give me every single day. What products are you using? And just like that, you have a brand new customer that's asking you instead of you soliciting business. So you're eliminating that defensive mechanism, if you will. Okay, so, so what I'm hearing you say, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but what I'm hearing you say is that we're, we should be building the relationship first working on the relationship with people. And then as we build that rapport, even if it's somebody that we don't know from Facebook, because I'm sure we all have friends where we are not in a, like Grayson and I know each other. We spend time at each other's, with each other personally. I may not spend time with everybody that's online. You know, I'm, I'm, get, I'm gonna get to meet you tonight in person, which I'm really excited about. Stoked. Um, but the relationship first, let, just touch on that for us. So. Build that, go into depth a little bit about, yep. you know, the rapport. People want to know that you care. I mean, I want to know that you care. I think that in my traditional businesses, when I, my attitude is to serve, is to serve first. Like, let me serve you. Let me do what I, what you pay me to do. And if I do that, then the money tends to follow. But if I'm chasing after the money, there's never enough. It seems like there's never enough. And, 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 yes, and really, that's just a perspective in my brain. It's really just a change in my heart. It's not necessarily. Will you touch on that for us? Yeah, okay, absolutely. Respect to social marketing. Absolutely. Very first thing, ladies and gentlemen, you all are horrible actors. I am a horrible actor. So when you try to fake it and you try to <coughs> use the best technique and strategy just to find the right angle to give that one person to say, sure, I'll take a look, you failed miserably. Do you know, just like you, James, and just like me, from the very first message that we get from a person, we know right away, this person is about to pitch me a business. You, you know, you just know, like, all right, come on, give it to me. What are you trying to throw at me, right? So it's like, that, that one guy that never talked to you in seven years, never liked anything, and all of a sudden they send you a message, hey, James, it's been seven years, man. How you been? And you're like, oh, okay, what are, you gonna, what, what are you gonna hit me with, right? <laughs> so here is what you need to do is to, to genuinely, and it's okay to, to be straight up and talk business, but you just need to genuinely just, just forget about the strategy and the technique and allow the human element to kick in. Think about the person you're talking to as your neighbor. If a new neighbor just moved in into my neighborhood, I am not going to say, hey, how you doing? My social security is and my birthday is and come on, see what my laundry looks like. <laughs> Weird, right? Weird. A little, but, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, but, but, but like, hey, welcome to the neighborhood. Glad to meet you, Ali. That's a friend request. That's okay. literally, let, let's compare the real, the physical oh, oh, world like this. Yeah. with yeah, a virtual world. So you're going to relate it to a real relationship. 100%. Okay, let's so, hear it. Let's hear so, it. So, so that handshake and an introduction, that's a friend request that just happened. Now leave it at that. 
Now, every okay. time that neighbor or you are walking out to the driveway to get the mail or going to your car, you're passing across each other like, hey, what's going on? Nice seeing you. Nice hat. Hey, what's up? Hey, I like what you did with the roof over there. Those are comments on a news feed. And the more that that engagement, that comment is happening, the better the relationship happens. Then Super Bowl Sunday is right around the corner. Hey, hey, what are you doing tomorrow? Dude, yeah. come on over. We, we got people over. Yeah, bring the wife, bring the kids. You just went onto the messenger and you just said, hey, man, what are you doing tomorrow? I got a webinar that I really would love for you to check out for me. See, you take that uh, human element approach, the relationship by itself will absolutely will be created. Now, here is where we all fall short, the lack of discipline and a lack of patience. We look at people as filet mignon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I got to eat. I am hungry. I want that steak. And what you got to understand is people have different core values. And when I mean core values, I'm not talking about reason why and goals. I'm talking about to you, you may say, Ali, I got to make a million dollars a year. That's a core value. That's an important piece to you, right? To me, I don't want to get out of my house and I want to be with my son and my wife every single day. That's my million dollars. So you can come to me and say, Ali, if you work your butt off alongside with me for 16 hours a day, I guarantee you a million dollars. I'm going to be like, I don't care about a million dollars. I want to stay home. See, when, yeah. when the core values are not in a perfect match, you are thinking, the heck is wrong with him? I just, I'm, I'm going to show him how to make a million dollars, and he's saying no to it. Now, that's what people usually say. Like, how can you say no to my opportunity? Look at how many people are making 10000 a month. Sure. Because that person you're talking to, their core value is not money. Their core value is spending the same exact routine with their spouse, is having the same ability like me. I am non-negotiable about my wife. And if any of you know me, know me for real, for real, you know, like my family is my everything to me. Like we're non-negotiable about our gym in the morning. We're non-negotiable about lunchtime, two breaks in the day, and a nap. Literally, it is in our schedule, cuddle and nap in the afternoon. That's what we do every day. The reason we do that is because that's within my core value. So yeah. You can tell me right now, hey, I'll give you $10,000 to break that. I'm going to say, listen, I'm blessed and abundantly happy with what I have. I don't want to give that up. Yeah. That's my no. million dollars. So, so, so again, when, so, when you are trying so to build a to, go ahead. So, we need, so we're trying to align ourselves with the core value. Well, so we, so is, is that, relates that to, go, go ahead. just go ahead. Go ahead. No, it's, it's more, it's more than that. It's more than identify what their core values are before you talk about the business. Um, okay. That, that like, I got to know what's important to you, neighbor, you know? And when the neighbor walks right. by and say, Hey man, I love those flowers. The neighbor just left me a comment. Hey, that thanks man. Appreciate it. Come on in. Let me show you the full garden in the back. See, yeah. they show, they show something that they like. Now I get to invite them. But again, we do not do that. We don't spend time to learn in what their core values are. We, we tend to fall into, Oh, yeah, you want to learn how I lost weight? Here's my link. Don't do that. If someone says, man, that picture of before and after is amazing. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. How, is that something that you're planning on doing? Ask. Is that something? If they say, absolutely. Well, what have you done in the past? I don't know. Okay. What's your budget? Um, $300 a month, maybe? Let me, let me show you what I can do for you with 300 Like, I don't have to sell you if I understand what's important to you. I just cater to what is important to you. So you're eliminating the pressure of selling. You're eliminating the pressure of closing. You're eliminating the pressure of marketing just by being a good human being. And what's wrong with that? Nothing. Nothing. I, and I think that's the direction that we would want to go. So it's because you kind of get that sleazy car salesman feeling when people continue to just push, 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 yep. you know, instead of. Um, and I have people, you know, I've had people ask me about it. I know that uh, Rayson's been involved in one in the past, and, and so that's his story to tell. But, man, what would, what would be some more, just some more real basic outline tips, just say for somebody that is interested even in getting started, where would they go? Where would they go to learn about how to do this correctly? So the very first thing that I advise everybody, focus on one platform. There are so many people who are like, okay, I'm going to do social media for now. And then they go to YouTube, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook. And every single piece not only has its own complexity, but it changes every three weeks. 
for those of you who are on social media, every three weeks there's a button that changes or a new feature that gets added. They do that because they want to change algorithms so people do not fall into the hacker's trap because hackers try to identify a system and they want to manipulate it. So that's why they change the patterns themselves. And two, they want to keep you engaged and excited. So you focus on one platform to start with. My recommendation, Facebook, because it is the relationship-friendly platform. Instagram is all about pushing things on each other. It's fast paced and it is a lot of fake accounts on Instagram. So you're doing a lot more work, okay. you know, in Facebook, you can actually identify relationships. LinkedIn is business oriented, great platform to build a business, but it has its own language. You cannot use it like Facebook. Um, the, the better part of social media is there's a lot of a little bit of fear, right? Like there's, oh, I'm old school. I, I do belly to belly. I don't do social media. Well, let me bring it to reality. Let me, look at, do, do you mind if I put a little flashlight on a reality check? Yeah, please, please. Okay. So you remember when back in the day, there was no such thing as email? Uh-huh. And then email came and we had no choice but to use it? Yes. <laughs> okay. Do you remember when there was no such thing as cell phones and everybody would hug a wall? And then this concept of a cell phone really became a thing and we have no choice but to use it. Mm -hmm. When there was no internet, you and I are blessed enough that we lived before the internet age and we knew what life was <laughs> like before the internet. Then, then guess what? We have no choice but to use the internet. Well, let me break it down to you, ladies and gentlemen. The age is coming where you will have no choice but to use social media. So it is not a matter of I'm old school versus I'm new school. That's like you saying, I'd rather stick with beepers. Cell phone? <laughs> Come on. Why would I use that? So I, I highly advise you on A, listen, man, you know, me personally, I have mentors. I have people that I pay. I, I go to seminars. You don't have to go that route if you don't have the budget for it. You can just start on YouTube videos. Like Gary V says, Google it. You know, you'll get your answer. Just yeah. Google it, right? But but stick with one platform and I'm here for you. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I work directly with James. I serve his community as if it is my own. So any questions that you have for him, he'll pass it on to me and I'll address it for you. I know that there is a prayer and business community that I will be part of it. So anyone at any yes. time that has any quick questions about tips and so on and so forth, I got your backs, ladies and gentlemen. I will answer it for you and help you out. But you got to make sure that you make peace with the fact that you have no choice but to use social media. And there is no old school or new school. It's just a different medium. Just like you talk on a cell phone, you text on a cell phone, you Facebook live or you, or you broadcast live on a cell phone. Well, guess what? It's the same exact thing. Just like you talk to someone on a networking event or you email them or you call them, you now just have a new platform or a, a new tool in the toolbox called social media. You just got to learn it and master it because you're going to be left behind. Because social media, all there is to it, it's a networking event on steroids that is going yeah. on 24-7. Why wouldn't you want to tap into that if you're in business? For sure, for sure. So, okay, so, I, man, I've been – I know I've gained a lot of value from the conversations we've had. Um, there's that old adage, you know, show me your five closest friends and I'll show you your income. Yep. Um, and, it, and that's scriptural too. I just wanted to read this scripture real quick. It's, it's Proverbs Please. 13, 20. It's walk with the wise and become wise for a companion of fools suffers harm. Trouble pursues the sinner, but the righteous are rewarded with good things. A good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children, but a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. An unplowed field produces food for the poor, but injustice sweeps it away. Whoever spares the rod hates their children, but the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. The righteous eat to their heart's content, but the stomach of the wicked goes hungry. And, you know, Rayson and I, Rayson pointed that scripture out last night, and man, that is a phenomenal thing for us to yoke ourselves. We're to, we've been talking about yoking ourselves, and for those of the, you that don't know, back in the old days, when you yoked an ox with another ox, they had to be equal in power or the plow couldn't run straight. And so that's what they say when, you know, you hear the old adage, I want to be equally yoked with somebody. I want to know that our core values are in alignment, that we are going in the same direction and that we can, can contribute equally to each other's lives. And 
so that, so I would encourage you, you know, look at who you're surrounding yourself with. We've been talking about being in alignment this week. Um, we've had, I really feel like we've had some really good topics. We're not trying to sell you anything or we just want to add value to your life. That is our goal to add value to your life, help you build a business uh, with God in the middle of it. Because I think if we could, I, we would love to see a revolution. God in the middle of business, you know, and let's take this country back for God. So, Ali, we, man, we love you. Thank you so much for your time. It, me, it means so much to us. Can't wait to see you tonight, man. Uh, special prayers for you and your family through this hard time. Thank um, you. We're, we're lifting you up. And uh, yeah, so is there anything else you wanted to say or, or racing? You want to add anything over there, brother? God willing, or, or or the other way around. Absolutely, yeah. You never know when I make it your to your your side of, uh, of the country as well. So you guys are good people. Keep doing what you're doing. And to your point, um, James, just for for the hardest thing is to to cleanse your circle because mm -hmm. you feel you feel attached, you feel guilty, you feel scared. You know, it's like, am I gonna be looked at as a sellout? Uh, the hardest thing, and it took me 11 years to finally make that cleanse for myself. And I, when I mean cleanse, not just completely dropping people, say, I don't want to talk to you anymore. You're just minimizing your time uh, with an individual that is not necessarily putting you in the right direction or raising you where you belong. Sure. And sometimes it happens to be the closest ones to you. So, so, so what you have to do is get busy with produce, you know, income producing activities, get busy with, with the personal growth activities, get busy with things that are the best for you. And here's the thing, two things are going to happen. That individual is either going to come along and become better or they're just going to naturally drop. Like, you know, go to the gym and tell those five people who are just out of shape, you know, just smoking cigarettes, drinking all day, just not having it within them, you know, and they're like, hey, guys, I'm going to start going to the gym every single day. Two things is going to happen. One, they're going to show up and you're changing their lives. Two, they're not going to show up and you're not being held back. But the decision always belongs to you. You have to put yourself in a winning position. Um, and, yeah, you, listen, I, I, used to, I used to smoke cigarettes and I quit cold turkey five years ago, six actually years ago. And here's, here's what happened. Those five people that were around me would make fun of me every day. Yeah, give him a drink and see what happens. Oh, I, I guarantee you. Give him, give him three days. Uh, wait until New Year's Eve. Wait until they, they were doing everything to see me go back on that bad, bad habits. But we're here. Waiting on you to fail. I think there's probably a lot of people out there right now that have, have people in their lives that are naysayers, that are, um, you know, not contributing to their life. So do an evaluation. Look at, look at your life and, and square that up. I know that me in the past, man, I was not lined up with the people that I should have been lined up with. And it got me in a lot of trouble. And today I want to align myself with people that are lifting me up, that can help build me up, that are going to encourage me, that are going to um, help me go in the right direction. And always at the, at the, the biggest thing is to lead me back to God. Like if I'm out of line, please dude, you're out of line. You, something's off with you and you need to, you need to zero back in. You need to get on your knees and pray. You need to read your Bible. You need to do something. If I'm at, if I'm that out of line, please say something to me because I don't want to be that guy anymore. I don't want to be like that. I want to, I want to continue to move towards God. So Ali, we love you. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate, appreciate you. It. We'll see you this evening, guys. You have a great day and we'll see you on the next episode of PIB. Take care, everybody.